forgot the microphone. G'day, how you doing? Good morning, Monday morning. I hope you had a great weekend. Once again, fingers crossed this is coming through. I did some research on getting a mobile broadband. Oh, hang on. Uh, on getting a mobile broadband. I'll do some more research. It looks like I need a new SIM card for my little modem thing. So I'll look at that and hopefully I don't have to stress about this stream and the kind of dodgy mobile phone uh, hotspot that I've got going on. Now this looks like a favorite. I thought this would be um, something you guys would be really interested in. I was messing about in Photoshop exploring all the different menus and I found this yesterday and it's really simple, it's really easy. Um, keep in mind it is the second time I've ever tried this, yesterday being the first, but it was so much fun and I thought you guys would really enjoy it and we can create some really interesting surrealistic, if that's a word, surrealistic or surrealism based imagery with this particular technique. Okay, before we get started, a couple of things. A huge welcome to all the new subscribers. Over the last two weeks, whilst I've been doing the live stream, all of you guys have been incredible and we've had about 500 odd new subscribers. Now, given my audience or my subscriber base is about, it was just under 8,000 when we started, that is a huge increase on percentage terms for that subscriber base. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone that was already a subscriber and is supporting this live daily weekday project. Um, there's a lot of names in this list here. I won't run through them all, but there's a lot of names here that I see each and every day. So thank you so much for watching along, supporting, liking, commenting. And once again, if you're new and you're not a subscriber, click the subscribe button, click the get notifications little bell, and then each morning at 10 o'clock when I go live, there's a 10 minute period waiting period for everyone to join in, but you'll get an email, you'll get a little phone ding um, to let you know that we're about to go live. Uh, okay. okay. Oh, lastly, I've got some notes down here, you might see me gazing down. Lastly, um, down below if you're interested in learning Photoshop, my most popular Photoshop course is now pay what you like. It used to be $149. It's now choose to pay whatever price you like, including for free if you're doing it a bit tough. If you're doing it tough, then please accept the course as a gift from me and, um, you know, learn Photoshop and there'll be hours of entertainment in creating absolutely incredible images of your wildest dreams. And that's what we're going to do today. This is a little bit more advanced, granted, but I think most of us will be able to follow along. Speaking of following along, what I have done is I have added these example images into the free sample course that you can find on the homepage of www.thebohemiancreative.com.au, okay? So go over there to the Bohemian Creative, click on the free sample, sign up to that free sample course. Not only will you get three really fun tutorials to have a play with, but these two example images will be in there as well. So after this video, jump over there, sign up, download the images, come back, watch, follow along, have some fun creating these incredible 3D shapes. Have I forgotten anything? One thing, I can now see you guys in your comments over on the left. So if I happen to, if it all goes pear-shaped and you're telling me that my uh, that my profile picture is covering something up or whatnot, then I can see. Like we had on Friday, it was all a bit funny, wasn't it? With um, you guys telling me that I was covering up the layers panel and I didn't have a clue what you were talking about. Now I can see you. So as you type over there, you know, keep it family friendly, um, especially you, Tom Putt. Uh, but I can see you having fun and having a joke while we're going. Wow, Cheryl says we got 84. Speaking of which, she says we got 84. This is a massive record. Um, so obviously you guys love the creative stuff, much like I do. I don't care for reality, and this is really taking reality or, uh, or the lack of reality to a whole new level. So let's, uh, let's jump in and have a look. This is what we're going to be creating, is this funky looking earth sphere marble in a desolate, I don't know, let's call it Armageddon style, burnt, encrusted 
dried out seam. Okay, but before we do that, let's have a look. Uh, is that that's that one? Look, we can do these funky things too. We're not going to go into this um, particular upside down pyramid shape today, but that's, you know, this is part of the same process. What I might do is we'll get in there with the sphere. This, oh, there's another one. Look at that beautiful marble from an aerial shot. Absolutely gorgeous. So that could be, you know, the planet, a planet of some description in an astro scene. Who knows what that could be? Um, where are we? That one. What we might do is we'll come back later in the week. If you guys enjoy this one, we'll come back and we'll do an in-depth tutorial on how to create some of the other objects that are a little bit more difficult. This um, pyramid shape is a little bit more difficult because it requires essentially selecting images for all the sides, all the different sides there. Okay, and there's the starting image. But we won't necessarily get into that today. I don't think we'll have the time, to be honest. Okay. So, that being said, I don't have the sky layer, do I? No, let me open up my sky layer, open. Oh, not that one, desktop, this one. Now I've had some trouble with Photoshop freezing and crashing, and here we go, it might do it right now, just as an example for you. But if that happens, you know, we'll just open up again, no big deal. 87, all right, if you're loving this, hit the like button, Leave me a comment, say hello, and of course, uh, remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out tomorrow or the next day. What is coming up this week before we get in, just quickly, because we have some great stuff. We're going to do Photo Critique on Friday. Thursday, we have one of Australia's most talented photographers, illustrative photographer, Sue Ellen Cook. It's just going to be phenomenal. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, today, we've got this, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know yet, <laughs> to be honest. Something really fun anyway, worth hanging around. This is a surprise edition and I think it's going to be fun. So let's, uh, let's do that. I'm going to delete this one out of the way, just so we can free up some Photoshop space. Don't save. 97, crikey, this one is going gangbusters. Okay, let's get into it. You're going to be surprised at how simple this is. Fingers crossed I can communicate it on a really simple level. But what we're going to do, we've got the sky photo here and choose any photo you want to wish to turn into a marble or a, a sphere. Um, and then we're going to go up to the Photoshop 3D menu. Hey, check that out. Who's checked this out before? I certainly hadn't until yesterday. Just exploring, seeing what fun stuff I can find. And uh, what I might do as well is I'll re-record these videos in a more detailed fashion, and then I'll put them inside the Bohemian Creative um, paid courses for those of you that are members of the Bohemian Creative courses already, and, um, and we'll have some more fun stuff, in-depth tutorial on these 3D layers in there, and we'll create some Salvador Dali-esque surrealism photos from that. All right, 3D menu, down to new mesh from layer, across, Mesh preset, the one we're looking for here is sphere. Check this out, simple as this. Oh, menu, you're about to create a 3D layer. Do you want to go to 3D workspace? Yes, we do. Doesn't really matter. Look at that, it's already done. It's already done. And I've got the little move tool here. Um, it's just by default should be on the move tool. Okay, and we can just, look at this, rotate round. You will see on the back where the image is joined together, but that's okay, we'll push that round the back. No one needs to see that. And then we need to kind of get a gauge of the perspective we're hoping for. Something like that, yes. And where do I get the light? You can also change the light. And this disappeared before, and then I thought I found it again. Okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. Click on infinite light down there, and we can click on this little, look at that. Oh, it must have been hiding behind that little icon there. And we can change the light. But what I think we'll go with, let's go with something like that. Beautiful. And that's all we need to do, essentially. 
Now what we can do is press Command or Control A, Command or Control C. Declan says 107, we are going crazy. Thank you so much for supporting. If you're new, feel free to hit the subscribe button, get notifications so you'll be around for more of this funky fun stuff over the next few days, every weekday at 10 a.m. All right, not that one. I do want this one, actually. Layers, we'll delete that out of the way. We'll look at doing this, or maybe we'll do it Wednesday. Maybe, maybe Wednesday we'll do a more in-depth on some of the other shapes we can do. Delete that, delete that. Okay, actually, before we paste down our new sphere, I want to remove the horizon and clean this up a bit. So let's remove the horizon initially. Click on the rectangular selection tool there, and then just click and hold. And if you don't have the rectangular selection, it's the second tool down, right click, and there's the other options. But we want the rectangular one for now. Right click just outside the top left of the photo frame and hold down and drag across like so, just above those trees. We will now press Command or Control J for Jelly Bean, and that will take that layer onto its own, well, take that selection and create its own layer. We now press Command or Control T for Transform. We need to hold Shift down to stretch down from the bottom. Hold Shift, click in the middle, drag down, and we'll cover up those trees. Okay, now I won't run into it right now. The rest of this um, tutorial you can find in the Bohemian Creative, but what we should do now to make this more realistic is just put a slight blur. Ah, oh, sure, let's do it. Command, Alt, Shift, E. That will merge those layers together. So we now essentially have a new flat layer that combines both. Using the same tool, the same rectangular selection, just drag a little slot incorporating a little bit of the sky and a little bit of the foreground. Once again, Command or Control J. Okay, now we have that slot on its own layer and we'll just blur that a little bit. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and look, that's probably pretty much just a little bit. Couple of pixel blur, see before, sharp edge, looks terrible. You'd expect there to be a little bit of blur, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, perfect. Click OK. Why I didn't just jump straight in and do that, I don't know. Let's clean up some of these little rocks. Add a blank layer. Click on the Spot Healing Brush, which is also J for Jelly Bean as a keyboard shortcut. Right click there if you're not sure, because there's lots of tools that have J for Jelly Bean, and it's the Spot Healing Brush we're looking for. Because we have a blank layer, you want sample all layers selected. And we'll just dot out some of these. Do the same thing for your dust spots as well. That'll do, that'll do. Okay, we can now paste down. Now I still should have, I think, the sphere on my clipboard from when we did Command A, or Command or Control A, Command or Control C. So hopefully Command or Control V now. Look at that, what a beauty. And we can click the Move tool. And where do we want that? And we can even press Command or Control T for free transform. And I think that looks pretty good. Click OK. Okay, now, we want to make the background that crazy funky Armageddon style. We want to increase the light here on the sphere a little bit, the intensity of that light on the sphere. And I also don't really like the shadow, the harshness of the shadow, so let's actually fix that up first. If I grab my lasso tool, which is L for lasso, right click again on that tool and just choose the standard lasso, what I'm going to do here, Click and hold, and I'll come, whoop, yep, yeah, that's fine, right round here, and then just zip under that there, and essentially what I'm trying to do is create a selection of the edge of the shadow, because I want, I want to blur that a bit more, it's too harsh for my liking, 
just like so. And we can, should be able to go straight to the blur tool, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Look at this. Just blur that out a little. That's too much. That's better, except not up there. Click OK. Command or Control D just to remove that. I'm just going to add a layer mask now. B for brush. I'll drop my opacity and my flow down. Let's go with 30% and 50%. Coming through loud and clear, guys. Hopefully, no complaints so far. So I'm just, I've just got a black brush here. And I'll just brush away. Whoop! Check my hardness. Yeah, my hardness is at 100. We don't want that. Let's paint that away a little bit. And look, we'll fix this up in a second. That's fine there, actually. You'd expect the edge to be of a shadow to be a bit harder directly under. So like that, and now let's add a curves layer and just darken the shadow a little bit. I need it to be a little bit more intense, but I didn't like the hard edges. So curves, drag the white point down. This is great for creating shadows. And invert the layer, Command or Control I. Sound and pick all good, says Graham, perfect. We've inverted that shadow layer over. B for brush, yep, that looks good. And we will Yeah, that's nice. Oh, that's better. Okay, a little bit too much maybe out here. So back to a black brush. I'll lower the opacity down again. It's just about, you know, to and fro. Use your eye to see what works. A shadow. If you're creating a shadow in Photoshop, it should be more intense with a sharper edge close to the object, and then drop in intensity, and then blur the further we get away. So that's looking realistic-ish. Okay, perfect. All right, let's work on, let's work on creating that really crazy, yeah, the dust spots, that really crazy background. Okay, I'm going to turn those off for the time being and click down to the layer below here. Okay, in actual fact, what I could do, if I click the background layer off, unlock it by clicking the little padlock, and then hold shift down, click all those layers below the main sphere, and press command or control G, we'll just tidy that up with a group. And we can call this background. Okay, perfect. Now we're a little tidier. Let's, 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 how are we going to do this? Okay, solid color layers with messing about with the blend modes should give us some really funky end of days type color schemes. Okay, solid color. Orange, we want that burning red orange look, something like that. And now let's mess with the blend modes. Multi where? Ooh, yeah, maybe. Oh, I like that. Okay. Which one to choose? I think the one that appeals to me most is color dodge for the time being. Okay, that's working pretty nicely. Very nice. Let's add a bit of a dark vignette around for now as well before we Keep pushing, curves. We'll drop down like this. Look at that sphere really starting to stand out. That looks beautiful. Command or Control I. We have our big brush, yeah, around 30, 25, 30%. Whoops, in a white brush. 110 in the chat, woo, thank you guys. I had a feeling last night when I created that crazy, I love crazy over the top, when I created that sphere and the reds and the yellows and the color scheme, I did have a feeling 
that it would be rather interesting to see how it was done. Um, and I thought it might go a little bit crazy. So there you go. I'm glad it did. But you're only encouraging me to get a little bit more crazy. I hope you realize that. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. A little bit of a vignette. Yeah. Oh, I know what we're going to do. Let's open up that background layer. And in fact, I need to turn, I'm going to turn all those off. Click on that layer there. Is it going to allow me? In fact, I might sit above the background. This might not work. Command. Option Shift E for everything. It did work. On a Mac, that will be Control Alt Shift, hold them down, and press E for everything. It merges those together because what I want to do is add a whole bunch of clarity, which is going to give us some grunge and texture. So let's go back to the filter menu, back to um, Camera Raw, which is essentially Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Well, it is Adobe Camera Raw, and add heaps of contrast, I mean, clarity. And maybe what, dehaze? Not too much dehaze, actually. A little bit of dehaze. Where's that texture slider disappeared to? Detail. Well, we could, could we add? Nah, we won't do that. It looks like I need to update my Adobe Camera Raw because I don't have the texture slider. So never mind. I was going to add some texture as well, which I know is in the latest versions of Lightroom. But it looks like I need to update this particular version. As you know, you might have heard me say before that because this Mac is very old, I can't update beyond 2019 in Photoshop. And I have my Windows machine over to the left, which is the one I do all my main tutorials on, which is updated to now. I think we're up to 2021, are we? Something like that. Anyway, we've just added all that grunge through clarity. Okay, turn these ones back on. Oh yeah, now we're talking. All right, that's looking good. Let's, let's grunge up and darken up the edges of just a fraction more. I want to be clicking to the layer directly under the sphere because I don't at this point want these layers to affect the sphere and by working directly underneath, they will not affect the sphere. Curves. Great, Command or Control I to invert. Okay, that might do. I want a little bit more light. Oop, not, not that, not dark. A little bit more light on this side. Um, in fact, that area there that's very orange, let me just fix that up. And I'm going to lighten up initially. You know I just added the vignette, but I kind of changed my mind a little bit. Often Photoshop is a little bit of sort of floundering around, not really trying to get where you want to go and not really knowing how to do that. And then all of a sudden, boom, it will come to you and uh, you'll get there. So I'm just messing with the colors. Let's go another solid color layer in that kind of orange, brownish orange, and mess with the blend modes and see if we, oh, that's pretty hectic, isn't it? None of those are appealing yet. That's a nice washed out look. I don't mind that. Color dodge, no. Overlay. That's kind of okay. Vivid light. I used vivid light in the sky yesterday. Maybe we can use that. Or actually, linear light's nice too. In the sky, I quite like the sky like that. Um, okay, click on the layer mask, invert, B for brush. And let's just paint in a little bit of that. That's nice, that's really nice. Okay, what if we paint a little bit? A bit much there, isn't it? X. I 
want that to be quite light, like the light's kind of streaming in, there's some smoggy stuff. We'll change that purplish tone to maybe a more unnatural, unappealing tone um, in a minute, potentially. Let's go again, solid color. I want to paint with like a streaming of sunlight burning down. Let's see if that works. Orangish. This time we're going to change to color dodge. Yeah, that's working. Cool, cool, cool. That's nice. See, we're getting there. Command or control invert. Always remember when you're doing color, solid color layers, to click back on the mask and invert the mask um, if you're having trouble. White brush. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we are talking. Oh, I'm liking that. Okay, let's work on the light on the sphere itself, which means clicking up to the sphere. And again, we'll do a similar solid color layer in color dodge, which, is, which of course is my painting with pure sunlight. It really gives that blaring sunlit look. So an orange roughly in the middle to begin with. Click OK. Blend mode, color dodge. Not quite right. Double click back on the colored icon here. Oh yeah, I get a little bit excited sometimes when it's working. And this is starting to work. I don't mind those highlights kind of blowing out because we, we're kind of trying to project that this is a real intense light, but it's a bit pink. I want it to be more yellow, more like that. Let's go with that. Okay, we can hold down Option or Alt and hover between those two layers. So between the sphere and the new solid color layer, that will clip it down. So it's only affecting the sphere now. And then invert the layer mask, Command or Control I, and we can brush without it, without worrying about it going into the background. Check this out. Let's give that side. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe darken a little bit there. Curves. Command or Control I. Yeah, and we can maybe even darken this shadow up a little bit more. We might even darken that shadow up even more than that because the light I'm projecting is very intense. So let's do a little bit more. Curves. Command or Control I. You can see it's really making it quite dark on the bottom of that sphere as well. Let's paint that in. We can maybe bring this curve of that sphere around like that too. X to go back to a black brush. We'll just take some of that intensity away. We're getting there guys. We are getting there. Let's click down below the sphere. I just Look, you might like that beautiful magenta color, and I, I do find it very appealing, but the background's supposed to be a bit grungy, a bit dirty. Um, so let's just tweak that. So I've clicked below the sphere because I don't want to affect that sphere. Hue saturation, and let's see what tweaking the hue will do. Yeah, we can go really orange. Hue, psychedelic. I mean, that's cool in itself. Yeah, I quite like that too, but I kind of want it to be a dirty, grungy orange color. Maybe more like that. Command or Control I. Didn't really change a lot, did I? Just a little bit. Oh, I've got a black brush. I was wondering why it wasn't working. Okay, that's a little bit, did it do much? Oh, only a fraction, didn't it really? Only a fraction. 
Now that we've painted that in, what if I just tweak, yeah, let's go more orange, in line. Now we have a more harmonious, or a sky that is more in line, I suppose, with the foreground. And um, that tends to add to the simplicity of the image. And we now have these oranges versus these blues. Where is my color wheel? Where is my color wheel? Color. So we've got, where's my little color picker? So we've got these oranges. Okay, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Delete that layer, I didn't need that, whatever that was. Command, Alt, Shift, E. I just merged those together. Okay, so we've now got these oranges here. Okay, in the foreground, you can see they're sitting over between yellow and red, and they're versing blues. Okay, now I could, in fact, if I wanted completely complementary colors, maybe we can just tweak the blues a little bit there too. They're a little bit offset at the moment, so I'll remove that layer out of the way, or I'll just turn it off, in fact, that merge layer. Come back down to my sphere, add a hue saturation layer. And we needed it to be a little bit more blue and less green. Maybe just a tweak like that. And turn the saturation up. A little bit. And I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Everyone's gone quiet on the chat. Are we still there? Are we still there? Give me a shout out that you're still there. Um, beautiful. No? Yeah? Ah. Tom Putt, amazing. I can see you doing this at home, Tom. New addition in the gallery, absolute hotcakes. Sell like hotcakes, mate, absolute hotcakes. Great to see you guys are all still there. I hope you were just silent because you were enthralled with the process. Um, but yeah, that was a bit of fun. So look, go and... Um, Oh, he hasn't even been watching, Tom. He's just jumped on for a bit of encouragement. Good on you, mate. I hope you're busy with those ebooks and stuff. And hey, look, guys, um, check out tomputt.com. Is it, Tom? Put your, um, your web address down there. The reason I'm saying that is because Tom released a whole bunch of free photography ebooks late last week. So jump over there and um, if you're looking for something to do, some great educational content there for improving your photography with the eBooks and the knowledge that Tom Putt has shared, mostly for free. There's some of his uh, other stuff that's paid as well. If you enjoy the free stuff, jump in and um, support Tom with some of those other paid content things as well. Now, as I said, you can download the, these example images at thebohemiancreative.com.au via the free sample course there. There's a couple of other free tutorials within the free sample course as well. Download these, you can follow along at home. Have a play around with those 3D objects. We'll come back. We will come back. Where are we? We will come back and I'll show you how to, later in the week I will show you how to do some of these other ones because I feel like the pyramid is a lot of fun too. Okay, check this out. But I need to show you how to map the individual images to each side. Um, and I'll do that, let's say Wednesday for now, we'll come back and do another 3D tutorial and we'll look at say the cube and the pyramid and we'll do all that good stuff. I think that's it if there's no questions. Tom, have you put your web address down there yet? Drop it down in there. I think it's tomputt.com. If it's not tomputt.com, it's tomputt.com.au. <laughs> Tongue twister. Still here and 115 watching. Thank you guys. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can support the channel by clicking the like button, click the subscribe button and get notifications to make sure that you never miss out on one of these 10 a.m. Monday to Friday. We do it every weekday, live YouTube sessions. Thanks for, what, thanks for watching along. Stay safe, stay well, love to your family and I'll see you tomorrow at 10, 10 I've lost me words right at the end at 10 a.m. Sydney time. Thanks again and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.